Hey there friends, couple quick announcements. So when I first started doing these vlog videos, I mentioned that they weren't going to replace my regular videos. But what happened is I kept putting them out on Tuesdays and Tuesdays are the days I normally put out my other videos. So they actually did end up replacing some of those videos. I don't want that to happen and so I'm actually moving the vlog videos to Friday so that the Tuesday slot can still be the regular educational videos and then Fridays are gonna be more of the vlog type you know, ones and so they won't end up replacing them and in fact, um, now I'm not saying they're gonna happen every week but I'm gonna try for that and then um, we'll see how it actually works out to be able to do two videos more regularly every time. And then the second thing is I would like to open up a little more Q&A with you guys because I've never really done that before and we're good friends so hey, why not? So if there are any questions that you would like to ask, maybe you know, uh, questions about our little homestead, our farm, even personal questions, things like that, feel free to ask them. They could end up being topics for future videos or I could just answer them in the vlog videos. I do want you to note though that a lot of times when other channels will do um, an open Q&A, they'll read who the person is who's asking it and then their question. I would prefer to keep everything anonymous just to make sure, you know, nobody is getting attacked because of their question or anything like that. I usually try to keep it as positive as it can possibly be and so, um, yeah, if you want to just ask, ask a question, it will for sure be anonymous. You don't have to worry about that. I may read the question word for word what it was and then just answer it. So you don't have to worry about that. So if you have any questions, you know, something you've wanted to ask for a while, but it just didn't pertain to any of the videos that I've done, or if you're afraid that it was, you know, um, something that would take too long of a response. And, you know, as much as I like answering people's questions, I just have a limited amount of time to be able to do that. It might be easier than typing up something really long and whatnot. So yeah, if you have any questions, post them below this video right here, and then stay tuned on the next vlog video to have your questions answered. Okay, so just as a quick life update. So we ended up having nine goats, as you know, um, there for a while. There was Opal and her two kids, Daisy and her two kids, um, Chamomile, our bottle baby, and then we have, um, or had, Iris and Little Guy. So. In the end, what ended up happening, we were hoping to, well, in the beginning, we originally said we were just going to sell them. So we were just going to keep them, you know, have their mom's bread, and then we were going to sell the babies. Well, then, later on, of course, you know, we've been looking for a house for quite some time. We were like, well, maybe if we hold on to them, something will come up and we'll get to keep them. So we kind of drug our feet on selling them, to be honest. And then after a while we were like, you know what, it's just getting later in the year. It's not looking like this is going to happen. Oh, you worried about your baby? Don't worry, I'll take good care of her. Anyway, so we decided we needed to just sell them like we originally planned, but we weren't sure which ones we wanted to sell and which ones we were going to keep and all that. So we just decided to throw a whole bunch of them on Craigslist and then see which ones were going to get sold. So we ended up selling five of them, which is kind of hard to do everybody gets attached to them and so yeah that's definitely one of the sadder parts of you know livestock keeping is when you know you have to sell them and you have kids especially but we're not gonna lie i mean i'm a big animal person i like them and we get attached to them especially since we named them all this year and they're so sweet they're so cute and they're so cuddly so we ended up selling like i said five of them opal and her two which were our best milkers and so i was kind of sad about that in the if we were to end up having, you know, a bigger place later on, her kids would have been probably good milkers. We have Daisy and Poppy left, but Daisy's milk is really goaty, and so she's not really the best goat um, for milk purposes. And uh, But they are really quiet. Daisy and Poppy here are way quieter than Opal and her kids were. They were always being really loud. So these are more like pets and quiet, cuddly little friends whereas Opal and her kids would have been better milkers. So yeah, we just left it up to whoever wanted which ones and this is just what we got left, you know, over with. Can you run away and play with your mom? So, yep, we have four goats left. And so yeah, that's definitely something to consider. If you ever end up keeping livestock, you know, try not to get too attached because it can be a little bit harder when you have to sell them. Um, but it does have to happen, especially in our yard because we have a very limited amount of space and so keeping them would have been selfish anyway because then they have very limited amount of space to run and play in or really not a whole lot of you know space to run in the first place so 
yeah one lady had five acres which is great because iris is spazzy and run you know needed a place to run around and so that's going to be perfect for her and then the other lady i can't remember what she said i think she had more like three acres and so that's going to work out great for you know opal and her kids because then they'll have more space there too so no big deal it was actually a good thing uh, i think we made 750 dollars and then we bought 50 dollars worth of hay so we're still very much in the positive for it all so yeah that's good too make some money out of the deal and now it's a lot less stressful and a lot less work and yeah it's just working out a lot better are you sad daisy are you sad poppy are you sad we had to sell one of your babies i'm sorry girls i know you were really attached to them and so you're kind of sad now you're kind of moping around and poor little LG has had a rough year this year too because he's a big time mama's boy or was and then we ended up having to separate him from his mom when she had her babies so he wasn't real happy about that and then he got used to being in with Iris and then Iris became his best friend but then we sold Iris and so now he's in here with chamomile and so he's adjusting for the second time this year to being with someone new and not just someone new, not just chamomile, but he's actually living in here with the chickens. So, poor little LG. Don't worry. We won't be moving you around anymore. And Miss Sweet Chamomile's still happy. I don't even think she minds her new friend anymore. She did at first, but she's good. Oh, Cammy. Oh, Cammy. Yeah. We're always happy, huh? Yes, we are. Good girls. Yeah. Hey friends! So today we're here at this raptor program where they actually take in raptors, which the difference I guess between a raptor and a uh, just a regular bird of prey is that raptors have talons. So um, if it's a bird of prey and it has talons, it's a raptor. And so there's this place that takes in injured raptors and then they rehabilitate them until they can be re-released to the wild or the ones that are injured and can't be released back to the wild, um, they just keep and then they do educational programs with them and whatnot. And so, yeah, I'm gonna check that out. And you can see some of the birds um, that they can't release to the wild. Those are the ones that they actually use for the education and show them and they're really pretty birds. <laughs> they're really cool. So hopefully you enjoy them. And then also some pictures of the ones that they are able to release back to the wild, which is really cool.